Welcome back. I'm very glad to present you another Excel template. This time it's the Employee PTO Tracker Excel template. And this is for employees who are awarded PTOs or paid time offs at work. And if you want to know your current PTO balance at any point of time, or if you want to project the future PTO balance, then you can use this template. This template has a lot of different options to, in order to accommodate different scenarios at different workplaces but if you notice that your specific scenario is not handled or accommodated definitely let me know in the comments and I will look into it so let's get started so we we start off by entering the hire date in this case I've entered July 1st 2012 then you would enter the number of days that you get as annual PTO so in this case I've put 12 days you can also use it in hours. In some companies they award in hours instead of days. And the PTO accrual frequency is how do you get these 12 days? So in this scenario of monthly frequency, you actually will get one day every month. So for example, you start off with July 1st as your hire date. On August 1st, you get one day accrued in your balance and then on September 1st you get another day so total two and by the end of the year you actually will get 12 days so on July 1st 2013 you actually have 12 days of balance now this is monthly and if in your company you do weekly then every week you get 0.23 days and then if it's bi-weekly you get 0.46 every two weeks and you can customize it now the, the last option is granted Granted means you get awarded all the PTO at the beginning of the period. So 12 days on your hire date. So this is the granted option. Then the next important factor is how does your PTO balance get reset or renewed? So the default option I have in this template here is work anniversary. So on July 1st, 2012, you got hired. On July 1st, 2013, you actually will get see a bump in the PTO balance. And that's because we have set it to be work anniversary. And so you get another 12 days on your first work anniversary. And if we change it to calendar year, then that means when you hit January 1st, 2013, you actually get 12 days. And this is the calendar year setting. In most companies, there is a limit on how many days you can carry over from one period to the next. In this case, we have assumed that you are carrying over everything, and that's why the 12 becomes 24. So in the default setting, we have said the rollover policy is rollover limit, but then the limit, you have not entered anything, and that's why it is considered as unlimited rollover. So you gained 12, you carry over 12 to the next period. So if in case I would say 5, that means I got 12 at the beginning, I could only carry 5 of those 12, and I get 12 new, so 12 plus 5 is 17, so I end up with 17 at this period. So if I can carry 10, then I got 12, I can carry over 10, plus 12 new, so I go to 22. So very simple. And if you don't have any rollover at all, you don't carry anything, just change it to no rollover. Now you will still only have 12. You will not gain, you will not be able to carry over from one year to the next. So you start off with 12 at the calendar year beginning. You lost all that 12 and you gained new 12. So that's why it remains a flat line. So let's keep going let's go with the option of rollover limit for now and I'm gonna remove that so there's no rollover limit now tenure based tiers is where you could provide an incentive to your employees to stick with the company for longer because they will be awarded um, a more PTO balance more PTO as they stick with the company for more years so the longer the tenure they get more PTO this table will be effective only if you switch this over to yes. If you put it as no, then this table doesn't have any impact on the calculations. So now I put it to yes. That means I want the tenure to drive the PTO accrual rate. The table here says during the first year of tenure of the um, employee, so zero completed years, then he or she gets 12 days. 
after one year is completed they move on to 14 days of accrual after completing two years they move on to 17 so this is 10 year based um, accrual rates now since we enable this to yes now this person actually will get starting off with 12 and then at the calendar year the renewal happens so it gets another 12 and the reason why it gets another 12 is because the rate is still only 12 because the person is still in the zeroth year now when he or she reaches July 1st 2013 now it will move into tenure one bucket and in this scenario it will get 14 days so let's see how we get 14 they already gotten up to 12 so when they hit July 1st 2013 they get two more the reason why they get only two more is because they've already gotten 12 at the beginning of the calendar year during middle of the calendar year they are actually completing their work anniversary so they have a little bump the bump is the change or increase in the accrual rate so it went from 12 to 14 that's two days so you see a bump from 24 to 26 so let's imagine that this is 15 so what happens is 24 moving on to 27 and that's because three days of additional accrual happens because the person increased in tenure by completing the first year anniversary and you can also see I'm gonna just type in a really large number of days you can see this happening for this employee throughout the life cycle where they get a bump for the calendar year and then during middle of the calendar year they get a little bump if there is a change in the accrual rate so that's kind of how it, the tenure based system works now the other thing that the template can do is it can actually take in your input on actual PTO dates so for example I'm going to type in October 1st 2012 and that means I took a day off on October 1st 2012 and I'm going to put November 5th 2012 so now what happens is you start seeing the orange circles that means that my balance is going to get deducted uh, as I took a day off on October 1st so instead of 12 days of balance now I will end up with 11 and then another one I used here so that this template will automatically calculate these things for you and you can even put in a PTO date in the future so if you're planning to take you know a day off in the future you can put that in and then you can see how that impacts the balance now when you come over to the right side this is all ready made for you but if you want to change for example instead of seeing the PTO balance for today which is 15 September today while I'm recording the video but if you want to see another day then you can just type in another day for example I could put in May 15th 2016 and it'll tell me what it is so you can leave the default the default is today but if you want to change the date you can type in a date similarly you can change the date here the date here indicates where your chart is going to start by default it is set to the higher date so July 1st is the higher date so let's say you started off on August 1st then you see that immediately now the chart reflects from August 1st if in your scenario you want to see a different date just type in another date here over the formula then you will see the chart starting from that specific day number of days so you are currently seeing 365 days of trend and then if you want to you know increase the number of days just you can go one week at a time or you can just type in I want to see thousand days of trend and now there you go you can see it so a little bit interactive uh, and so that you can customize what you want to look at but that's pretty much it the template is specifically tailored to track and calculate the PTO balance and there are lots of different settings that you can choose based on how your company uh, company's PTO policy is uh, once again if I missed any of the scenarios definitely leave me a comment and I will look into it if you find the template useful please share it with your friends and if you like the videos please subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you get notified of future templates and future videos thank you very much for watching the video